been an amazing year, man. This year has been incredibly, this year has been incredibly powerful in so many ways. Powerfully negative, it's been incredibly powerful in a positive way. Despite all the negative that's happened. Why for me has that happened? And y'all might be like, choice, choice. Someone might be like, choice is ran. He just rambling on talking about nothing. Well, first, let me say this, that's fine. Feel free to hit the stop button and go see another video. It's all good, it's okay. My channel is for me to tell my story. My channel is exactly for me to express myself in the most positive way I can. Because when I'm feeling negative, I don't get on here. Because I can't take that back. And I'm not trying to put it out there towards anybody, even if I got ill will for you. And I don't have any ill will for anybody at this current, at this present moment. And I haven't for a long time. Despite what people may think that even over the past few months or this year, the things that have been thrown at me, I don't have ill will. One of those reasons is because I'm walking in a spiritual war. And I'm so proud of that. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Yo. I'm so, that's why I'm laughing because I'm getting, this, it's making me, I'm proud of myself for that. And I got people that love me, that's around me, that have seen, that have seen and know, that know what I go through, that what I go through outside of this, outside of this YouTube space. You know what I mean? So they know what I'm going through. They've seen the change, they've seen the resilience, they've seen the, the stillness, the noble silence, noble silence. They've seen it, they've seen me execute that. They've seen me execute damage control. And when I say that, why put myself in a position where I'm causing myself and everybody around me and even the YouTube space more damage? Why do that? So, Listen, yo, I hit my knees every morning. I don't necessarily hit my knees every morning, but when I open my eyes every morning, I give thanks. I talk to God. And I don't tell the man, I don't tell the man, and I don't ask the man what I, can I have this? Can I, can I, can, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Can you do this for me? There's one thing I say to that man, and that's if I can gaze upon the beauty of the Lord all the rest of the days of my life for Psalms 27. Besides that, I asked him what I could do for him. Plant seeds. All this year, that's what I've been doing. While everybody, Corey Andrews, thank you. While everybody else has been in this Instagram space, Facebook space, YouTube space, and 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 doing all of this spewing of all this whatever they While do everybody else is doing that i was doing what i was supposed to be doing and that's planting seeds and i planted the seeds in the right soil i planted them in the right soil and you know when you plant the seed you put the seed where does the seed go where does the seed have to go to grow where does the seed have to be to grow it has to be in the dark it has to be in the cold <laughs> away from everything else. It can't even be next to another seed. <laughs> In a sense. You understand what I mean? So, and there's a period of time. It's not like you put the seed underground and the seed just sprouts out. It's a period of time that it takes that that seed needs to be the seed needs to be in the dark. It needs to have a gestation period. It needs to be there. And if that seed is dug up too fast, if that seed is 
if his gestation period is interrupted at the wrong time, and I'll get to what I mean by the wrong time later, but if that seed is interrupted at the wrong time, if it's dug up at the wrong time, if the sun hits it at the wrong time, if it's planted in soil that it's not supposed to be in, guess what? It fails. I did a great job of planting them seeds. I planted them right where they needed to be. I planted them in good soil and I made sure that I didn't plant seeds in any bad soil. I had my foot in water. And I'm serious when I say this, I admit it. I had my foot in water that it wasn't supposed to be in. I had my foot in water that I don't usually put my foot in. And it's really unfortunate for me because I automatically was put into a box for those who saw me with my foot in that water. So those that saw me that really don't know me, that's what they know me for. Having my foot in that water that it wasn't supposed to be in. But that's okay because if you judge me, then you judge me. But my point is, if you don't want to get to know me, then don't get to know me. But if you really knew me, if you really knew my heart, and if you really knew my mind, you would understand that that wasn't me. That wasn't me before my foot was in the water, and it's not me now. And I'll never put my foot in that water again. Be sure to plant your seeds where they need to be, because I'm, I'm sowing the seeds this winter and it's beautiful it's beautiful for me I'm seeing everything come to fruition and I can already see what next year is going to be like for me God willing and it's beautiful but that is from me for me doing what I needed to do and not being out here paying attention to what I'm not supposed to be paying attention to I'm sure there's plenty of things that you can teach me. You know what I mean? Uh, I just talk about experience. And if I got any knowledge, it's come from that. You know? So I can't even take credit for that. All my experience has been from one or the other. It's been from the enemy or the man upstairs. So I can't even take credit for the experience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't even take credit for that. I give it up. <clears throat> Wednesday, last Wednesday, I was going through some things in the truck, man. I was just getting hit, hit, hit. My man calls me up, and he knows when I'm hit. Like, yo, Choice, you all right? You sleep? He asked me all that. He asked me that all the time. I'm like, nah, man, I'm not sleep, man. Like, you good? I hate telling him I'm not good, because I asked him, and he's always good. But, and I don't say that in a sarcastic way. What I mean is that he lifts me up. At the end of the day, on Wednesday, I had to give it up. I literally had to give it up. A coworker of mine, his name is Kurt. Shout out to Kurt. We were talking and he asked me how my week was going. I told him, yo, man, my week is going horrible. But you know what? It's not going horrible from here on in. I said, I said my prayers and I had to give back the reins. I tried to take the reins on Monday and try to take power over the week. And I should have known better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I should have known better. It wasn't for me to do. And the minute I tried to do that and keep doing it, as if I actually had some type of some type of skin in that game. Humans aren't humble. We're here to get humbled. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's, 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 uh, this year is powerful. Some great things are happening. I hope I hope beautiful things are happening for you guys. I hope I hope that I hope beautiful things are happening for the people that I've seen in bad situations. Even people that might think that I want them to be in bad situations, never the case, never the case. I hope and pray that they get up out of whatever situation they're in. 
whether they need help or not, I hope that they get out of it. Jeremy Higgins, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Right, right. And it depends, you know, and a spiritual punch in the face ain't funny. I mean, none of them are funny, but you know what I'm saying? I like to see other people winning. I like to see other people winning. I'm seeing people winning too. Not everybody, but I'm seeing a few people winning. And when I see them winning, whether they know it or not, I'm in my seat and I'm celebrating that. I'm celebrating that. I don't need to be on their shoulder. I don't need to be in the, in the YouTube space. I don't need to be in anybody's comments. I don't need, I'm celebrating that. I'm going down the road and I'm happy for them. Whether it be back home, whether it's out here on the road, whether it's, whether it's in this YouTube space. I don't get on Facebook really, so I don't really see much of that. But I, I love to see people win, man. Genuinely, genuinely, authentically. I want to see everybody win in the right way. Because the bottom line is, there's some people out there winning in the wrong way. And that's their, that's, that's, that's their game. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But you build your house on sand. Eventually, I'd rather build my foundation on rock, solid rock. I just really, really, really today, I'm sitting here and I'm reading the comments. And, and I'm thinking about all the things that's going on. Wish I had the ability to see the good in, in, in times of adversity, you show me it can be done. So I started to be the same way. Yo, Jeremy, look, I can't take credit for it. I can't take credit for it. The way that I didn't always see the good in everything. That's what I'm saying. The way that my whole I don't know how to say it. I, tr I try not to say it. So I don't want to sound like, you know, like, look at me, watch me. This is the way you do it. I don't, that's, in no way, shape or form is that how I'm trying to sound or ever want to sound. All I can say is what's happening to me and, and it's been happening to me. If anybody was in my live feed over a year ago, over a year ago, I talked about exactly this. I said that this is what was going to happen. I didn't say that this was going to happen, but I told the people that I was fed up. That something had to change. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever been in the rooms. In the rooms, what I mean is like alcoholism, drug abuse, or anything like of the sort. Or if anybody's been to any common sense, you gotta hit rock bottom. When you hit rock bottom, whether it's mind, spirit, or body, that's when you wanna change. That's when something gotta change. You know what I'm saying? I really do. I just see how you handle things. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate the comments. Jeremy, I appreciate you speaking it out. I appreciate it. I appreciate it because it, it you're celebrating my success and I appreciate it. It makes me feel good. You know what? Damn right. You know what I mean? Someone sit back and be like, oh, that's all he wants. Nah, that's not what I want. Nah, man. So that's why I put out the disclaimer. Because it's too many of them, it's too many of them out there. You know what I mean? Damage control. That's why I did the damage control. Before he already knows. My man knows me. Before I I need people to understand. To understand. I walk, I walk straight up. I keep my head up. And I believe in myself, man. I believe in I, I'm I, hey, hey. I said it, I said I was fed up and something needed to change. And I knew that day, when I did that live feed, I was talking about it, how far away from my spiritual walk that I drifted and how I needed to get back. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. And with the help of some good men, with the help of some good men, For real. And 
don't think for a second, don't think for a second that it's all been great because it hasn't. It hasn't. And that speaks to what you said, Jeremy. It hasn't been all great. But it's been so powerful on the end on the, on the end game. It's been so positive. I had to go through all of that. You know, when I got to LA and I sat down with this Bible study group and I told them, hey man, look, uh, and this was in 2016, 2015, 2014, 2014. I told them how for the first time ever, I prayed in 2003. For the first time ever in my life, I prayed in 2003. For the first time ever in my life, I recognized that there was a God. I said, hey, you know what? I need to try something. I need to try you because I've tried everything and nothing's working. And at that point in time, I wasn't in here. I, was, I wasn't struggling. I wasn't struggling financially. I, I was I, I was in the, I was doing okay but I was conflicted in my heart I was conflicted so I knew I had to do something when I got to LA I told them hey man you know what I told I, I, I asked God for help in 2003 and my life spiraled out of control so why I'm saying all of this to say that uh, to, to speak to what I'm talking about now after that live feed at thick mud and I needed to get closer again yeah things started to come to I started being attacked because of course I need to be held accountable for my, having my foot in the water when it wasn't supposed to be so it makes sense I had to ha I had to I had I had to be held accountable He's going to show me what I was doing wrong. Only to show me what he can do for me in the end. And I'm moving. Things are moving. I hope things are, uh, everybody else is doing great. I've been working hard and staying humble. Uh, staying humble. Just enjoying the time and opportunities the big man gives me. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. It takes a real warrior to do that. It takes a real warrior to do that. So, shout out to you. And more power to you, man. And I hope you... You know what I mean? I don't think many really understand how powerful that word is, man. Nah, K. Okay. They can't. They can't. They can, but... When I say they can't, you know what I'm saying. I can't unless I'm in it. Unless I'm walking it. Unless I'm surrounded by it. I can't, man. If I'm left to my own devices, forget about it. Forget about it. It's over with. It's over with. It's over with. Yeah, that's how I got to praying because uh, life was kicking me and I have, I done been, life was kicking me and I tried everything. I wasn't a drug addict, people, and I say this because people might be like, well, what's he talking about? Like, what's in the background that he needs? What's he talking about? I wasn't a drug addict. I wasn't homeless. I wasn't none of that. I definitely wasn't rich. I'm not gonna go into what I was doing. If anybody follows me, they already know. I don't have to say it. But the bottom line is, <coughs> I was conflicted. Life was kicking me, and there was nothing else. I tried. When I say I tried, I left to my own devices. Someone just said, "Hey, Trace, you're a knowledgeable person. You're a knowledgeable guy." Hey, man. Well, obviously that wasn't doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Obviously that wasn't working for me. It wasn't doing enough. It wasn't doing enough. You know what I mean? 
The only thing I didn't try was was God. So that's where my not. I tell you what. I feel like common sense or partly it was my knowledge that brought me there other than him tapping me on the shoulder for years saying come here man come here I'm trying to talk to you you're not listening oh okay yeah I, I hand you over it again you want oh that's what you want don't we do that to our kids sometimes don't we do that to our kids who got kids in here your kids want to do something or whatever you say oh oh yeah all right here I'll let, I'll let go of the reins for a second. Oh, you think that's the right way to do it? Okay. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You go and do that on your own. You go and handle that. So that's what he did to me. He said, oh, okay. He tapped me on my shoulder for years and he said, hey man, you want to do it your way? Sure. Go ahead. See how that works out for you. So me and my brain, the way my brain works, the way my brain works, I'm talking about my brain, choices brain, is, okay, I've tried this. I tried money. I tried lust. I tried, uh, I tried uh, feeding. And when I say lust, I ain't just talking about sexual lust. I'm talking about a lust for new things, uh, a lust to be in new places, uh, a lust to I wasn't one in the past that needed to be in the middle of a circle but I was one in the past that lusted to feel like I was on top of the world I didn't want people to see that especially what I was doing I didn't want people to see me but I wanted to feel that way that's a lust in of itself so Nothing worked, man. Nothing worked. I had I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted. I had the money to do what I wanted. I didn't see myself doing anything else. But that none of that brought me happiness, man. Uh, none of you know what? Scratch that word. None of it brought me joy. None of it. I was happy every day. I found happy. I was happy every day. Ah! Yeah, I'm over here, I'm over there. Yo, what's good, what's good? We're chilling, uh, pop, pop bottles and do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? Spend some dough, whatever. Yeah, I was happy every day. But joy, I didn't know what that was. I had no clue. Not a clue what that was. And if you don't believe me, I got a timestamp for that. I got a receipt for that. I wrote an article about that in my blog that's in my description. See how long ago that was written. It's called Joy Vs. Happiness. I wrote that years ago. So it's not like I'm just, you know, I'm just making this up as I go. You know, as I do this live feed. I tried everything, man. I tried everything, everything within my power. And nothing was working. Nothing was working. That undeniable joy, I didn't know. I don't know what that is. I know what it is today. I didn't know what it was then. You know, so in my head, like I said, in my brain, it was like, man, there's only one thing in this world that I keep giving the cold shoulder to, that I just will not accept, talk to, that I that I, I don't believe, I don't, I don't think of, I don't deal with, I don't talk to. The only one thing. One, I don't even, I shouldn't say thing, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So that's why I said, hey man, it's you, man. Let's give this a shot. And everything I went through from 2003 to this day today, all makes sense to me. It all makes sense. I pray for my kids, which I believe it won't go the same way. Uh, because despite uh, my flaws and my character flaws, I am a good father. No matter what, I am a, I'm a great father. So I brought my children up right. right. So, and needless to say, my, my oldest is brilliant and doing great and married in Virginia and 
got a career and graduated from college and did everything he was supposed to do. Graduated high school and honors and went to a, a college with honors and my daughter just got a full ride to college, going to be a doctor. She graduated from the national, what is that? The National uh, uh, Society, uh, what is that called? That the high school, that they, all the kids, uh, National Honor Society, is that what it's called? You know, graduated all A's plus, all that, all that. Brilliant young girl, beautiful. She's out there doing protests, got her own mind. She's out there doing protests. I'm calling them like, where you at? I'm in a protest. Well, you better be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I gotta be scared for her. But at the same time, it makes me proud that she got her own mind and she sticks up for things that she believes in. Then I got my young knuckleheaded son. And it's funny how God works, man, because me and him was going through so many things. Like, I mean, and he's the one out of the three that chose a harder path. And as, as I told you, I had to step back. And I had to, I kept trying to, I, I didn't put my hands on him. I wiped my porch with that boy. And I felt horrible after. And I had to ask myself, what does my father do for me? He lets me. It says, hey, you want to go do things on your way? All right, let's see how that works out for you. But he also tells me that he loves me. He also tells me that he's always there for me. And he'll always be there when I return. So that's what I did for my son. Somebody said, uh, someone said, I heard someone say there's no life manual. Okay, you still in here, Okay. Someone said uh, a few, uh, uh, um, a bunch of live feeds ago, I wish there was a manual for life, but there is. <laughs> you just got to read it. <laughs> you just got to accept that there actually is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Kay? It's a life manual. It's there for us. You know? That's it. That's where I'm at with it. Uh, I'm in love with it. So, another thing. One thing that scared me, and I'm going to say this for... Because you know what? Part of my prayer is, what can I do to bring people closer to you? people make it hard exactly that's part of my prayer what can I do to bring people closer to you let me know what I can do to bring people closer to you so here's a revelation and I'm gonna say it right now because this is what kept me away Bible thumpers you know what I'm talking about Bible thumpers you know uh, you know them the churchgoers is so contradictive or or that just want to beat church into your head um, uh, and there's nothing wrong with going to church. I, I'm talking about, I, I'm getting to what I'm talking about. Uh, people that just like every, 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 every conversation revolves around, around, around that. You understand what I mean? My, meanwhile, and then a lot of me watching people who, who are like that. They ain't turning around and they're doing this. I mean, like not being humble, showing no humility, which is huge for me. That's huge for me. Uh, these are the things that scare me away. So, I'm, for me, what keeps me grounded is I don't worship the worship. There's only one thing that I, there's only one thing that I worship and that's God. I don't worship my wife. I don't worship my mother. I don't worship my sons. I don't worship my daughter. I don't worship my friends. And I definitely don't worship myself. And when I say worship the worship, that's what I'm talking about. When the people, are, they thumping. 
They're so ingrained in, 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 in trying to know it all rather than just trying to be closer. I, ha- I can't be like that. And that's what scared me away. But for me, I don't worship the worship. So, please don't think that I walk around here and I'm like, yo, yo, you know, it's it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. But if you want to talk it up, we can talk it up. You know? The most important thing is the relationship between you and God, not the place of worship. Right. Yeah. I don't worship the worship. There's only one thing you should worship. And that's him, man. You know, so there's only one thing I need to worship, and that's him. And it keeps me, if I'm left to my own devices, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I will lie, I will cheat. I might resort back to doing things that I used to do to get money. I might not have gave my son the chances that he needed because too much of my pride was involved. If I'm left to my devices, I might let go on the shipper or the bosses or whatever, or even let go on a friend when my pride is involved. So I can't be left to my own devices. If I leave myself to my own devices, I'm gonna let myself down and I'm gonna let him down. But if I know that he's holding me accountable and I keep that in mind, I'm not talking about my friends holding me accountable. I ain't talking about a wife holding me accountable. I ain't talking about a mother. I ain't talking about kids, none of that. I'm talking about him. If I know that he's holding me accountable, I'm good. I'm a, I'm straight. With all that said, for those people who are leaving those comments, I'm okay, man. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, right? Talking about that. Profound patience. Do you know the... <laughs> I'm moving. I'm... Yo, y'all can tell me to shut up. Y'all can tell me to shut up. Y'all can tell me to be quiet. Y'all wanna talk about something else? His energy is in this live. That profound patience. So, me and my man was talking, and we were talking about when you plant a seed, right? Because remember, we were talk- I was talking about planting the seeds. So, I don't know about you guys, but I love instant satisfaction. I'm, I'm, I'm a instant satisfaction is damn near pornography for me. I love it. I want it in everything I do because that's that's that lust that I'm talking about. I want that. Instant satisfaction. So, my man asked me a few weeks ago, he said, hey, if there's anything you learned this year, what, what, what has it been? And I said, it goes back to our conversation. Awesome video, I've been watching your videos all day. I appreciate it, Justin. Justice, I appreciate that. That's why I struggle. I don't want to let family, friends, or enemies see any weakness in me. That's how I'm afraid how they will see me. So I hold it in and let it eat me up. <clears throat> Howard Hobbs, you good. Appreciate it, Hobbs. Yo, Justice, I'm going to get back to that, Jeremy, if you don't mind. But uh, uh, it's not weakness, brother. It's not weakness. <laughs> Damn it, baby. Now, see, I... I I sit on here and talk to y'all for hours. I'm telling you. So he asked me, "Is it one? What, what have you learned this year?" I said, "If there's one thing, be cool. They can't hit what they can't see." One thing I he asked me, "What do you learn this year?" I said, "I'll tell you what I learned. I learned that." And he said he saw it. I said, "I learned that." No, actually, I fell short. Let me go back. Let me let me backtrack so I'm not lying to y'all. I fell short. I I was. It's part of me not being, I don't like to, my man knows it. I have a hard time celebrating myself. I have a hard time doing that. But I got brothers in my corner that can tell me what they see. It doesn't mean that I frown upon myself because I don't do that. There's a difference. So let's, let's clear that up. 
Like I said, I walk straight. I walk on my head high. I'm not frowning upon myself. Why? Because I know I got him in my corner. But I try to practice humility. You know, I don't like to say I'm humble. Anybody that says they're humble, that's the least humble. That's the least humble statement someone could ever make. Hey, man, I'm humble. That's so far from a humble statement. So I try never to say that. But I try to practice Humility. I try to practice it, and it comes up to me all the time. So I have a real hard time answering certain questions that require me to celebrate my successes. It's just my character. And it's something I, I might learn to get over, but I'd rather not. I'd rather stay in the lane I'm in, because it's doing. I, I'm doing okay with that. I'm doing okay with it. But long story short, he asked me, I fall short of the question. And he tells me, you remember that? Remember that conversation we were having, Choice? Which one was that? Or the conversation about the seed? Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, of course. Like, how could I forget? It was a profound conversation that lasted about three to four days, and we we continue to touch on it. We continue to uh, build on it. So he's like, that's what I see. Now, while he's telling me this. I feel that already. Like I said, I don't want to say it. I don't want to celebrate that, but I feel that. I have, and if, if that's one thing that this year has done for me, the profound and powerful patience. So now when I say that, we say, oh, what I mean is, we all talk about patience. <laughs> Yo, we talk about patience every day. I can say, I can use the word patience so loosely. Oh yeah, I've learned to be so patient. Okay, that's cool. That's great. For me, that's great. I've learned to be patient. But really, it's not enough. So we had this conversation. We were talking about planting those seeds. And the way my mind works is when people talk to me, I illustrate things in my mind with a... Um, I illustrate things in my mind with like damn near a cartoon you know those little sketch cartoons that that's happening and stuff that's what i that's what happens in my head so i was quiet for a second and uh my man asked me what i was thinking about you know what i'm saying he asked me what i was thinking about and i said man because when you plant that seed remember i was saying i can go off on tangents that's why y'all gotta slow me down sometimes when you plant that seed, it's not gonna grow immediately, right? But me, I want, I want instant satisfaction. I want to, I want to plant this seed, and I want it, I want to see it a tree tomorrow. That's what I want. I want everything I can get from that seed tomorrow, <laughs> like in in the next few hours. That's what I want. I teach my son to do something. I want him to show that immediately. I want him to exude that. I want him to sh to to lift my pride up and show show me what what your father's taught you. You know what I mean? Uh, that's that's what I want. I want instant gratification, satisfaction. I do something for somebody. I want to see something in return immediately, right? So that's that's what I was thinking of when it came to planting the seed. When we when I plant the seed, he asked me what I was thinking about. I said. I see a little girl playing the seed. And you know how a little five-year-old or six years old are and they don't really know what things do yet. So I pictured in my head, I had this little girl playing the seed. Like her father goes to the store, buys her this, you know, they're at the store together. She says, daddy, what's this? He says, oh, those are seeds, baby girl. She said, oh, can we get some? What do they do? He said, well, you plant it and it'll grow a tree. And she's and the little girl's ecstatic. She 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 wants she wants to see that happen. She's never seen that happen. So the father buys the little girl the seeds. Seriously, this is how my head is working. Me and my man, we're talking about it. And and she goes home. They get out the car. She got the seeds in her hand. She bolts to the backyard. The father goes to the, to the house. On the way to the uh to the house. 
she's asking the father, what do I do with him? And the father tells her, you got to put him on the ground. You got to put him, you got to put him, you know, in a good space. And, and, and you put him on the ground and a tree will grow. He doesn't explain the science to her. He doesn't explain what it really entails. So when they get to the house, he goes in the house, she bolts to the backyard, she digs up a, a hole and she puts the seed in and she covers the hole back up and she sits there and looks at it. Because in her head, she thinking just what her father told her. She's gonna plant the seed and the tree is gonna grow. But she's a child, she doesn't have, she doesn't have any discernment. So she doesn't see the seed grow. Right? So she runs back to the house. She runs in the house in the kitchen. She said, Daddy, Daddy, I planted the seed, but there's no tree. And the father says, You have to give it time. So then immediately. I thought about the little girl going out there, sitting by the seed, you know, checking on it every day, waiting for it to grow, handling the things she needed to. But even more so, I don't know if there's any farmers or anybody got family as farmers, but I just thought about the powerful patience of a farmer. Maybe that's why farmers are so like, I don't know, I, I find that farmers are real like, cool. You know what I'm saying? That's a powerful patience to be able to plant a seed, turn your back, walk away, and wait to see what it brings you. That's not patience. That's like, to me, that's powerful, powerful, powerful patience. And that's what I was, when me and my man was talking a few months ago, I said, I want that. That's exactly what I said. I said, I want that. That's what I want. That's what I feel like I've learned. And, and I'm still learning. But that's what this year has done for me. And it's put me in a, an amazing position. An amazing position. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in so many ways. And in so many different uh, uh, aspects. You know? And in different... Uh, places in my life so all thanks to God man